I'm going to show you about the 12 volt fuse box for the camper van. I'm going to show you about wiring it, fusing it. I'm going to open up the inside of it. Let's have a look and see what it consists of inside and how it works. So I'm going to install this in the camper van. It's going to control lights, electric pumps, uh, all the different 12 volt systems within the van. So we'll open it up. Let's have a look, see, and uh, see how we do it. Okay, so here we go. One thing to note, it does come with a load of stickers that you can stick on these windows to identify what it is. What you'll notice by a lot of these is a lot of them are marine orientated or boat orientated. These are designed to be used in any 12 volt system. A lot of the stuff that comes with it are all marine or boat related. I'm not going to be using a lot of these. There's a couple of blanks. I'll make up my own later on. So let's have a quick look and pop the top cover off. Two tabs here and here. Press them in, the top comes off. So basically we have here um, a positive supply. So that positive supply from the battery puts a positive on each of these terminals. When you insert a fuse, you bridge the link and each of these screws then becomes live. So even with this connected and no fuses in, none of these terminals have any power to them. I'll demonstrate that shortly and then basically we connect our negative supply here either you can connect it directly to your battery via a fuse or a switch um, and then that in turn wires these 12 systems these 12 switches they're all connected to negative I'll show you continuity between all of those continuity is just a very simple measure of whether there's a circuit pass between the two so that if one is connected the other is connected um, that basically gives us the opportunity then to see what this is like on the inside. So here's all the screws. So there we are basically inside. Our negative bar is just basically, as you can see, these are all connected together, so when you put on your ring connector, which I'll show you in a minute, looks something like this in brown, in black, which I don't have, but basically a ring connector goes on there and it gets clamped down, and that makes this all negative. On the other side in here, these are all connected, but as you can see, hopefully you can see there's a gap between these so these are bridged out when you put the fuse in so when the fuse goes in it connects it makes this part live here so if we put a fuse in here this becomes live if we don't have any other fuses in it none of these are live because there's no connection between the positive feed coming in and the battery you can also see there's a little circuit board under here and on that circuit board uh, which we can just see is what's what controls the LED lights so we'll have a look and see what's going on now in a minute so that's basically it's quite flimsy and it just pops out uh, that's there and it's held in when we put this back on there that's basically the fuse block connected Okay, so for the purpose of this exercise, we're just going to use a battery. And we're going to connect a positive lead to our positive, a negative lead to our negative. They're a bit short. Um, I actually may get some longer ones just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so some longer leads. Let's put these out of our way. It gives us a bit more options. Um, what we need to be careful in doing this is because these are live, we could touch them off other things so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw this down to the timber
Okay, so that's a nice tight connection. So, just for the sake of uh, getting this right, uh, there's a multimeter. This allows us to see what voltage is in the batteries. I've currently set it on DC. V and the straight line and the dotted line underneath it is the symbol for DC. Sometimes it'll say VDC. VAC is above here, which is V, and then what's known as a sine wave or a wavy line symbolizes AC. So we want it on VDC, so we're just going to check the, the output on the battery. And we have 13.05, which is perfectly fine. I'm just using this small booster pack battery um, rather than using the big um, leisure batteries that you've seen in previous videos because they're just too big and awkward to look around. This one sit, fits nicely on the bench. Um, just to let you know that one of the things that we do um, as a day job is I actually repair design, manufacture, um, and do a lot of work with manufacturers of jump start packs and we use a lot of these small um, compact batteries for jump starting cars, trucks, buses, all that kind of stuff. So this is why I have these batteries lying around. So if I do a voltage connection here on the negative lead here and on the positive of the battery, we've got the same reading so it means this cable is good. It's not necessary to do it all the time, but if you ever ended up with a problem and you weren't sure what was going on, you could always make sure that your cables were good. I'm just going to attach this here. And now I'm going to run a negative, a positive, to our positive supply. Eight mil a lock washer or spring washer and flat washer another flat washer the whole reason we have these flat washers I'm just going to zoom in and show you now it basically rather than using just the nut to put the terminal on we put a flat washer on we attach that so that sits down nice and tight. We put our other flat washer and it just basically sandwiches it between the two. Try to get my hands out of the way. That goes down on there. I'll tighten that up. Move the battery over, make it nice and tight so you guys can now see what we're going to do. So again, just a very quick voltage test. Um we should have the same reading both sides here so we've got 13.06 okay so now we're going to connect this light to our circuit board just to see what sort of uh, things happen when we connect so these two wires are, join are loose I want to join them together a couple of different options I have um, normally you'd use ring terminal which is connected onto here it opens up screw goes through that and it screws down you can also use a fork terminal which just slides under so they just slide under there and you screw the screw down and it tightens it the only thing is if the screw was to come loose, this could in theory pull out. The ring terminal would stay on. It won't pull out unless the screw falls out completely. But just for the purpose of this, we're going to attach that. So technically speaking, this will be live. Want to join it to that. We can use these kind of connectors. They literally just two ends of the wire push in here, crimp it using a pliers or a crimping tool or a vice grips or whatever you have that will crimp it. Uh, you can also join them using bullet connectors, shaped like a bullet. One's insulated, one's not. The insulated one always goes on the side that there's power coming out. 
So it just means if it does touch off something, there's no current in contact. This one can go on here like that. And again, they can be pushed together and crimped. Handy if you want to take something on and off on a regular basis or you might need to move it. So I'm just going to attach the negative side to our grounding block. And just connect these. Now I haven't crimped them, I've just pushed them in. Because this is so I've turned on the light and the LED is illuminated. The light hasn't come on. The reason for that is there's no fuse. So let's put a fuse in. Loads of different types of fuses. Different colors usually represent the ampage on them. They go in steps of five. So we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Orange is a five amp fuse, which is more than adequate for the wiring here. And it's such a short lead, it's only just for test purposes. So let's see what happens when we plug the fuse in. Fuse is now in, switch the light on, and the light illuminates. So, light switched on. What happens if the fuse blows? So if the fuse blows, we'll simulate the fuse blowing by removing it. The light goes out, but the LED comes on. So at a glance, even here, looking in, it's bad camera angle, but you can see that the LED has come on to show that there's a fault with that. So always turn off the light or turn off the appliance, whatever you're using, before you replace the fuse. So turn it off, so the light's gone off, but we now know this is the one, so we would get a new fuse, put it in there, switch it on, and our light is now on. So basically that's how the fuse board works. Um, and it just means that if there is any issues, we can look at it. I'll go into fuse sizing later on. The fuse size is designed to protect the wire. These are two different gauge wires. I'll explain all of that in another video. But for the moment, for the test purposes, fuse lights working, fuse blows, LED light goes on. Turn off the appliance, put a new fuse in, switch it back on, and the light stays out. Okay, so what I've also done in this setup, I'm going to turn the light off. So this is our circuit breaker. So this panel has a load of fuses that protect the wires going to all your appliances. But this panel also needs to be protected from any problems or potential short circuits from the battery. We use a 60 amp circuit breaker. The reason I've used a 60 amp circuit breaker is I've calculated the, the approximate loads of everything that's going to be going on the, along with the wire size. So that of any one item or any number of items that are on won't exceed a current of 60 amps. If it does, that circuit breaker will trip out and protect all these fuses and the appliances and the wiring connected to them. So just to show you how this works, I'm briefly going to disconnect it from here. In the event of a short circuit, um, something shorting out between the fuse the bodywork of the vehicle and a positive supply along this line. This circuit board or this fuse board is protected by this breaker. Instead of putting a fuse in, we put in a resettable breaker. It's not practical to do it for all of these. Um, it'd be too big and too bulky. These are still better than using these, which are just the inline blade fuse. So effectively, it's a much bigger version than that but it's resettable and I'll show you how in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect this guy from there. So to simulate a short circuit with this fuse breaker, 
I'm going to touch this off the negative terminal, creating a short circuit. And I'm going to watch you to watch what happens with the fuse breaker. I'm just going to zoom in. So you see the circuit breaker is in place. I'm going to touch it off the short. Immediately, straight away, it flicked out. There's now a break in the connection between these two wires because of a short circuit. Or indeed, if there was an overload, if an appliance went faulty and there was a very large current draw from the fuse board, fuse box, through the batteries to that, this will trip out. Now, I can't reset it yet, but if I wait, it will allow me to reset it. It's usually about a minute to reset. You can also use this by pressing the test button here. You can use it as a temporary disconnect. So if you wanted to do some work on this and you didn't want to run the risk of short circuits, you can actually press the test button and the unit will reset. So now it's reset now and if I just press the test button, it pops out automatically. So that allows you to test to make sure that it's working. Short circuit, it pops out, protects the unit. So that's our in Oh, there's the multimeter, turn it off. In most vehicles, in 12 volt systems, almost every vehicle, with some exclusions that I'm not even going to mention because they're too complicated, are wired, ground is negative. So your negative terminal of your battery, the black wire, the positive terminal of your battery and the red wire. So the negative or negative terminal black wire is wired to the vehicle's body. That basically means that the body of the vehicle or the chassis or any part of it that is connected metal on metal is negative. So we should be able to take any point on a vehicle and have our positive terminal here and our negative terminal anywhere on the battery of the vehicle anywhere on the body of the vehicle will give us a current reading because the current basically flows negative to positive so what i'm going to do in the camper van system is i'm going to have every positive come back to so our 12 volt supply comes back to each one of these they'll be fused according to the rating of the appliance which i'll go through in another video um but in order for me not to have to run too many wires throughout the camper van what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to run almost as, as many of the negatives directly to the bodywork of the vehicle so i don't have to run black wires and red wires throughout the whole vehicle which means is that my wiring system will be much easier to fault find can be much easier to identify and as long as i have a good earth which will again i'll go through later on as long as i have a good connection i say a good earth i mean a good connection between the negative of the battery and the negative of the fuse box and or the vehicle it basically makes any wire connected from there to the body of the vehicle on the negative side basically will all come back through the vehicle's body and back to this point here so it means i only will have to run single red wires off these terminals out to whatever appliance um, or function i'm trying to get on the 12 volt system the ac inverter side of it is completely different but for the moment we're just going to deal with the 12 volt supplies so i hope that's been informative i'll go through the various different types of crimps and connections that we can do in another video um, we'll show them how to make them more secure now, as you can see just quickly on this one, you see there's some heat shrink tubing over here and there isn't any heat shrink tubing over here. This just allows to make sure that there isn't any accidental touching of the connections that would create a short. Except on this one, it's not going to create a short because it creates our circuit which gives us our LED lights. So it's just slightly confusing and counterintuitive, but that is the way this particular machine works. And if a fuse blows, it protects the wiring and the appliance. So, I hope this has been informative. I hope you found that video helpful. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
um, and like and subscribe to the channel for more hopefully informative videos on uh, our installation of the camera van. Thanks for watching. Bye.